Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Folger Tech CNC. Um, so this is going to be, well, first off, I should say hello. What's up, everyone? My name's Dustin. You know me. I think I got a thing I could put here. I don't know. Anyway, um, this is going to be a long requested video because a lot of people have been asking me all the time, at least, um, about the Folger Tech CNC attachment. What is it? How does it work? What are the parts? And really, there's not been much information about it. So I'm just making this short video going through what everything this is going to come with, or more than likely will come with, um, and explain how it's pretty much going to work. Um, this is not a detailed overview video. This is just like for people who are like, oh, is it going to have this? Is it going to have a motor? Is it going to controller? All that kind of crap. Um, this is just going to be like a basic overview of that. So, you know, let's start here. So first off, obviously, FT5. Right here is the heart and soul of the thing. Um, so this right here is a 12 volt, 12,000 RPM DC brushed motor. Um, essentially, it's a gigantic Dremel motor. That's more, more or less what it is. Um, so this is, yeah, it's basically a motor. This is a 3D printed mount right here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 3D printed mount that this goes into. This isn't a final version. Um, the new ones look a lot better than this. Um, I just got, like I said, this is a beta unit. Everything you see here is beta, so it may be slightly different in the final version, but this is what I have, and this is what I know it as. So anyway, you come down here, and we have a chuck right here, um, and then whatever bits you're using. I'm currently using a spiral bit, um, but you know it's, it's gonna basically, oh my God, Facebook! Much better. Blame the moderators on the Facebook, uh, on the Folger Tech Facebook group. They're where I'm gonna, I'm gonna admin chat, and they're talking. Um, so anyway. This right here is a chuck. Um, you put the bits in there. Uses pretty much standard Dremel size. Um, so this chuck uses, I think, between 0.3 and 4 millimeter bits. Um, it comes with one engraving bit, which works great for engraving PCBs and stuff like that. Um, so essentially, this is just this, uh, the motor and this assembly. This hole right here is for uh, vacuum, you know, so shot back or something like that. This is just an adapter that goes in here and then the shot back attaches to that. Um, what you don't see here is there is um, these brushes that go on these sides all the way around to like seal in um, the whole thing for uh, better dust collection. I just don't have them on there, but uh, there are some like of those, you know, like dust or vacuum brushes that go on that too. So that's there. Next is the waste bed. So the 3D printing bed is underneath. So this assembly um, basically is a waste board. Um, with essentially, you know, this is the chuck for that. Um, there's these little brackets, or 3D printed brackets that you can mount in any of these holes on here. Let me see if I can get a better shot. Hole, hole. Um, and you're able to put whatever it is you're cutting on there and secure it down. I don't have them installed right now, but that's essentially what it does. And like I said, this just sits over the bed. Um, the only thing is if you're using one of the, uh, CNC mount holes for your end stop. You will have to remove that. Um, that's what I was doing and I did have to remove that, but you know, it'll be fine. Um, the only other thing is down here. This is a speed controller for the motor. Um, this is user controlled variable between one and a hundred. Um, the firmware, the Marlin firmware in the MKS board does not control the motor at all. And I'll get to that uh, in a little bit. So this plate comes with it. Um, and then you have this uh, screen, the on-off button and adjustment, and then this is the regular 3D printing LCD. So let me explain how all this is going to work. Um, like I said, this is not 100% finalized, but it's pretty much just this. So anyway, the motor right here, this, this powered motor, is basically wired directly to the controller, which is wired directly to the power supply in the back of the printer. That's it. So anything you're getting that's new is essentially just going to be all its own system. So this is going straight to that. That goes straight to the uh, uh, power supply. So you control that. You as the user control the speed 1 through 100, you know, 0 to 12,000 RPM. The movements is controlled by the regular board like you were 3D printing um, with the exception of you are using G-code. Um, there's a program that we're currently using, I think it's called ESTL Cam software. 
And so that will essentially uh, take whatever design you're going to be doing um, and converts it into G-code. Um, there's no G-code for heating extruders or anything like that. Um, it's just XYZ movements. Um, and so you put that on an SD card into the regular SD, uh, SD card reader and then run it like you would run a print and it'll move the head and then that in combination with the actual thing turning, if you turn it on, um, will result in CNC movement. So that's essentially all it is. Um, like I said, we are looking at ESTL cam. Um, the only issue is it's a paid software. There's a free, it's free, um, but you have a wait time you have to do after a certain amount of uses or whatever. Um, but if there's anyone out there who knows any better CNC softwares that are compatible with G-Code, um, let me know. That way we can take a look at it. Um, we're looking for either free or very, very, very cheap. You know, that kind of thing. So, anyway, the ESTL cam works really well, but um, we're just trying to see what's the best option for that. Um, so, yeah, other than that, that's basically what it is. Like I said, it's actually very secure on here. There's not very much play at all. Um, basically, as much play as the regular 3D printed head has, which is very, very little. Um, there's not much. Is it as, as, is it as robust and sturdy as a professional level CNC with a big router uh, motor and all that probably not but for engraving things and doing light engraving it should work just fine actually I have a piece of wood right here Whew. Um, don't mind that that was experimenting but see I did this focus you frick Hold on. doing this one-handed anyway you can see there how I you know actually was able to engrave this down this was like a half a millimeter passes it didn't take very long. This I was engraving something, you know, that was just an engraving with a certain bit. Um, and this was a test. It's obviously not going to look like this. This was using a, raw, a bit that I was experimenting with. So um, this was with the engraving bit that it comes with. This is actually a, a top view of the uh, effector for the costal, and it engraved that. So it looks like actually looks pretty good. Um, this is just like a half a millimeter engraving or something like that. So it does engrave very well. If you're looking for this to be an engraver, it'll work great. Um, if you want it to be a miller or anything like that, eh, it'll mill wood just fine. Um, obviously you have to do some slow, you have to run it slowly and have some fairly slow passes or uh, low, what am I trying to think of? Low uh, height passes, you know, words. So yeah, for if you're like looking to do this for like aluminum, I'm sure it'll engrave metals like aluminum. Is it going to mill it out like a big professional mill? No. Um, I'm sure someone's going to experiment and try to do it, but that's not really what it's made for. So, you know, just don't even worry about that. Um, otherwise, there's not really much else to it. That's essentially the parts that you're going to get and what it does. Um, the control sequence of basically like... In order for this to work, you have to position this, and then in the software, you tell you, you set the origin of compared to where the part's going to be um, in the in the like the G code programmer or the ESDL cam, and then essentially all you have to do is move this over to that exact spot, and then the Z height is right on the surface of this, um, and then once you do that, I have I've changed the firmware for the FT5 to have a set origin button and that basically will zero it out exactly where you are and once you do that then you can start the g-code and it thinks okay right here is zero zero it doesn't home or anything like that you don't use the end stops um like what you would for the 3d printer it's basically just tell it zero is here and then hit go and it'll start its thing and it does work pretty well actually it's it's a it's an interesting adaptation um so i'm i'm genuinely happy with it i don't use it nearly as much because i just don't really mill small things very much. I don't really engrave things all that often. Um, I personally would much rather have like a big four by eight foot, like CNC engra or CNC cutter or something like that. You can cut like big sheets of plywood or something. That would be cool. But in the future, maybe a kit, that would be cool, right? Um, we just need demand, wink, wink. Anyway, um, so yeah. And like I said, this it, the first installation um, is roughly 30 minutes, 30, 45 minutes, depending on what you got to do. After that, literally all you do is four bolts, unbolt this, undo the wires, plug the 3D printing stuff back in, and then take this mount off. And then you have the bed, 
And that's pretty much it. It's, you know, then from there on, it's just an easy swap between 3D printing and the CNC. So yeah, I don't really have anything else to say about this. Um, it's interesting. It definitely is interesting. So um, I don't know exactly when it's going to be released. Um, I'm currently working on the build guide for it. We don't want to just release it with no build guide or, you know, something like that. Granted, it is pretty easy. It's only a few parts, but... You know, the, the hardest thing is getting the sequence of teaching people how to actually use it correctly. That's the hardest part. So trying to come up with the sequence for, you know, how to put it in, make some, use the software, uh, and then the order of setting things up and hitting go. That's the thing that I want to focus on. So um, when it's going to come out, I'm not 100% sure, but it does work. So for those of you who are looking for a interesting, at least engraving uh, machine, it's definitely something you can look at. So yeah, that's been... Uh, the Folger Tech FT5 CNC attachment. Um, like I said, just stay tuned for more information on when it's going to be released and we'll go from there. Otherwise, I don't have much else to say. Uh, if you like this video, like it! Um, if you like my stuff, subscribe if you're already subscribed. Thank you! And I don't really need anything else from you guys except for comments and concerns. Um, I hope you guys have a good day. I'm sorry I haven't made many videos. I'll be doing more shortly. As you can tell, this is the first video I've made in a while and this is the most requested video. So anyway, thank you for watching, and until the next video, I'll see y'all later.